So I made a cinematic short film miniseries all by myself with inexpensive gear. That sounded pretty pretentious, I'm sorry, but um, if you haven't watched it yet, go check it out. I'll leave the first episode up in the top right corner so you can run through the series before you watch this video. So maybe you think you can't make short films due to lack of money, resources, or friends, or whatever the case may be. And that's who this breakdown is for. I did almost everything by myself with the gear I had. Now you don't need any of this stuff to make a short film or film series. All you really need is some sort of camera, an editing machine, whether that be your phone, iPad, or computer, and the willingness to put in the work and tell a story. So Elude is kind of a psychological thriller. It's about a man who finds himself making up a life in his head in order to help him cope with the fact that he is trapped in a relationship that he doesn't want to be in. The most challenging thing about filming a one-man show is you're responsible for it all. You have to worry about the lights, the sound, the acting, the directing and still be able to tell a story without being overwhelmed. What really can help is finding a friend or someone during their free time to help you shoot. Now, I understand a lot of us don't have friends that are interested in filmmaking like we are, so sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, and that's run a one-man show. I had my wife and brother-in-law help me on a couple of shots. All they had to do was replicate the shot that I showed them. That's it. Now, I didn't have access to them all the time, which is why I recommend finding something to help you pull focus like this thing. I shot this whole thing on a Canon M50. I used only two lenses, the Canon 50mm and the Sigma 16mm. The 50mm lens was attached to a Viltrox speed booster. The great thing about a speed booster is it gives you better low light performance and gives you the illusion that your camera has a bigger sensor. I keep the camera in a small rig cage simply for mounting options and it protects the body. 95% of my shots were on a tripod. For that, I used this Fluid Head newer tripod. It's pretty it's pretty great for the price and it will probably last you a long time. I never use the little LCD screen on the camera for shorts. That's how you miss focus. So I got this Anti-Sign A6 monitor to help pull focus and be able to see myself in the shots better. It's not that expensive and it gets the job done. For the outside shots, I always kept an ND filter on so I can keep my camera settings up to par. I use this K and D one for the Sigma and this other one for the 50 millimeter and I'll be sure to leave links in the description for you guys with the gear I use. Camera settings are super important if you want that film look or that cinematic look. I filmed everything in 4K 24 frames per second using no autofocus. I left my shutter speed at 50 and 50 because for film you want to double the frames per second. So 24, 25 frames per second would equal a shutter speed of 50 and so on. My lenses were able to go all the way down to f1.4 but for most of the shots I used an f2.5 or 2.8. I kept my ISO at 100 to decrease any noise that might appear in the shots. And I filmed everything in cine style which gives you a flat profile to help you color grade in post. I'll leave a link down below so you can get it for free. Now, I believe sound design and audio is more important than visuals for narrative filmmaking. I did all my sound and post and I re-recorded the audio to match the audio I got out of camera. I used the Cinco Mic D2 for all my voiceover and the little sound effects I needed. And it is what you are hearing right now. And I plugged it into a Zoom H5 audio recorder. It was all recorded here in my little closet slash booth. I have moving blankets on the walls to help absorb sound along with clothes and blankets. The mic is attached to a blue compass boom arm. You don't need this. You can do just fine with one of those $15 ones off Amazon. So again, touching deeper on sound design for this series. Let me show you a part with normal audio. Hello? Sounds pretty bad. Okay, now let's add some sound effects, some music, re-record the hello in post, and let's see how it sounds. Shut the fuck up, you stupid bitch. Hello? You're going to do exactly what I say before she dies. Do you understand what I'm fucking so as you can see, sound design is probably one of the most overlooked things in filmmaking, but makes all the difference in your work. All the outside shots were natural light. 
For the indoor shots, I used a ring light and two little LED light bars. All of them have to be plugged in, which is annoying, but they get the job done. So this is how I lit the ending shot. I diffused the LED bars with a little white sheet and faced the ring light towards the mirror to reflect some light back towards me. For the couch shot, I used the ring light with a sheet thrown over it. I always try to have the light at kind of an angle to get more of that cinematic look. And for the bathroom shot, I just threw up an LED above my head right here and had a ring light facing my back. Hello. The most asked questions was how I got the car shots. I left the quick release plate on the camera and then gaffer taped it to the dash. I used a Sigma 16 millimeter to get the wide shots and used a monitor to the side to help pull focus. For the laying in bed shot, I had a mic stand above my head and I attached a Joby ball head to the stand and then I attached my camera to that. Then I flipped the footage in post. The running upstairs shot, I had my brother-in-law help pan down with the fluid head tripod and I showed him what I wanted. I pulled focus beforehand and then he just had to replicate it. That's it. It took a couple of shots, but we got it. For the majority of the other shots, I just simply used the light stand with this head that I made a while back. You can get one of these at Hobby Lobby. So I did two VFX shots that you probably didn't even notice. Both of them were the laziest thing. Ever. The fire in the background for this shot, I downloaded it off YouTube, keyed it in post, and since it was in the background, I literally just blurred it out to match the camera bokeh, and it looks pretty cool. The rain on the back windshield, you probably didn't even notice as well, but it wasn't as smooth because the green screen video that I downloaded wasn't as long, so I had to kind of, you know, fix it around, uh, but it's, it's hardly noticeable. Literally did the same thing and turned the color temperature blue. So a lot of you said you liked the color grade on the series. What I did was a while back, I was playing around and made a LUT that I thought looked pretty cool in DaVinci Resolve. And I had it stored away for quite some time. On the first episode, I was trying to find the right look and stumbled across that LUT again. From there, what I did was I made an adjustment layer and overlaid it on the video. I went to the color panel and then searched for the LUT and then put it on the adjustment layer. Now it doesn't look good at that intensity. So I go over here and I put it at 60% and it looks better looks a lot better. Now some shots needed some basic corrections on the highlights or contrast or whatever so I made some micro adjustments there as well. If you want this LUT let me know and I'll figure out a way to let you guys get your hands on it. Now I'm not the best actor but I'm able to become someone else on camera. I tried my best to keep the suspense going and really tried to convey that I was really going crazy until you realize it's all just in my head. The best way to become better at acting is to start acting in other people's stuff, read acting books, or make characters that you can play in your own short films. Just like filmmaking, it takes practice, persistence, over time. So with every project, there will be mistakes. Things happen, things don't go right, and it's too late to fix them. The issue with me is sometimes I broke the fourth wall because I was scared the camera was going to move on the dash. Now I broke the fourth wall a lot on purpose because I thought it went well with what I was trying to convey, but I'm not talking about those shots. I'm talking about the little ones like these that were accidental. It bugs me that I see them, but it's whatever. Some shots like this one went out of focus while I was driving. It was annoying, but I wasn't gonna stress over it. This cloud up here was accidentally left there because I was trying to test something. I didn't notice it before I uploaded the video, which again, annoying. You can tell it's fake when the camera shakes, but oh well. The best thing to do with mistakes like this is to learn from them and don't let them get to you. Filmmaking is not perfect. It's imperfectly perfect, right? Sometimes you just gotta say fuck it and keep the show rolling. So this was a complete breakdown of the series. I know I probably missed a few things, so if you wanna know how I did a certain thing, just comment below and I'll do my best to answer. If you like these type of videos, let me know and I'll be sure to keep doing them with the projects I continue to do. If you have any film ideas or topics you would like to see going forward, feel free to comment below or DM me on Instagram. Thanks so much for watching everybody and be sure to go out there and tell some shitty stories.